Welcome to Third Chair. I'm Peter with Doug, and uh, Doug was out of town when we uh, filmed this episode, uh, taking care of business uh, in another state. And we went down with uh, Doug, the producer, to the Lightspeed Art Gallery, where we interviewed uh, some artists. The first one will be that we'll talk with is Tony, a uh, amazing photographer. And following that, we will talk with Shane, a local poet. This is Peter with the third chair on location at Lightspeed. 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 Nice place. Nice yes, art. Yes, yes, yes. And we have uh, our guest, uh, Tony Graham. And Tony, thank you for uh, talking with us tonight. Not a, pl not a problem. Absolute pleasure. Well, it is certainly our honor and privilege. So, um, you're here at an art display. I yes. assume you're an artist. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. I am a professional photographer. I have been a professional photographer since 2009. Uh, we're in a thing called Broken Glass Photography. Broken Glass, Broken Glass Photography. photography. Uh, do you have a website as well? Yes. Broken Glass. No, oh, I'll have to get the one. We'll get it right. We'll put it on the screen because it's uh, it's a bunch of numbers. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> you really is. Do you have a certain genre that you prefer to well, photograph? Oddly enough, the reason that I'm here tonight is the curator of the space, uh, Jessica so uh, I happen to be an art director at a place called Voodoo Leatherworks, which does a lot of thin feather stuff. Oh. So um, I brought some of the works that I've been working on. Although I was supposed to get other pieces and I didn't get them in time, sorry, Michelle. <laughs> um, but um, um, I do I do a little bit of everything. Uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, but my reason that probably a lot of people know is through the fetish work and through working with the Bless community because I've been doing work with them since 2009. So, this means I'm like a crazy question. Yeah. If someone wanted wedding pictures, I do weddings. I actually did a wedding last week. A wedding last week. You know, we had thought about providing video services um, for some weddings, but uh, we've heard horror stories where the videos went wrong and then you had the newly married uh, bride who was ready to kill you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a like, tough game. Yeah, it's a tough I just, I, I, we just decided for our, our personal safety <laughs> that, <laughs> that we would let others do that. Exactly. I yeah. feel like I don't <laughs> better do that. <laughs> Have you done any uh, work uh, photographing like animals in the wild or I you know what oddly enough I have but it's I mean, photography as a whole as an art form there are so many different approaches to that art form there are some people who can do portraits I can do portraiture I can take your picture all day long uh, you get me out to try to take a landscape I cannot do it oh how interesting you, know, uh, you do me um, wildlife photography I don't have the skill set yet tried it, it doesn't speak to me. Uh, but I've seen, that's why when I see other photographers who work in other disciplines, it's amazing because their head is approaching a completely different from my head is approaching. So I have pictures of my cats. And <laughs> your cats. I think they're amazing photographs of my cats. And, but when I show them, God, <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. or have a mentor. I run a workshop at a food food of Leatherworks called Broken Glass Photography Night because I don't put your name on um, um, That's once a month. Uh, third Wednesday of every month I would send information with that too. And it's kind of a workshop where we have photographers come in with models who come in and we'll try to practice a number of ideas. Uh, for myself personally, uh, I mean, I've, this is what I do for a living, 24-7. It is always trying to look for business. Um, I have models that I've worked with whenever I'm trying to come up with something more, okay, I want to do something artistic, uh, or I have a particular idea that I want to try, and then I will work with different models to actually do that. Um, 
but a lot of these times it's just kind of putting together uh, different ideas, trying to find people that match those ideas. Sometimes uh, the ideas are actually brought to by the models. Sure. Um, and you kind of then you try to make it make it work. Sure. Um, you know, people in the acting and the modeling, they mm -hmm. have cop cards. Yes. You know, a collection of sort of the four or five best photos. Yes. That sort of make you interested. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and is that something you'd be able yes. to do? Yes. Yes, I've done those. Comp cards are comp cards are interesting because even though the business, the technical side of the business is changed. I mean, we're not shooting film anymore. We're not. We're not living right, they're they're all digital. digital. It's all digital. Yeah, it's all digital. Yeah. yeah, it's all digital. digital. yeah. Um, but the, still, the concept of a comp card has not changed. No, no. It's still three to five images. It's still from shoulders up. It's still it has to be lit one to one. It's it's very very basic working photography, and that has not changed. No. Uh, but yeah, I've and yet I've seen that comp card. Oh dear God! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so important. You know, you got to do it right. And after. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, they say with resumes and comp cards, like, people make decisions in like seven seconds. They see it and they, they're yeah. excited for the work with you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah and, and it's really strange. I mean, I, I've had a few parts um, in some movies and stuff uh, that are a little bit back on the other side. And um, casting directors and people that make these decisions, it's very intuitive, instinctive, and like, and like they make it in like two seconds, just like, like you haven't even done your audition. And one guy said, "You, you will be the burrito man." <laughs> you know, like a, a paid part in a, in a commercial, but it was like, <laughs> you know, that's the look we're looking for. That always tickles me because that means that, that casting director had an idea in his or her mind that this is going to be the burrito. Man. Yeah, that person walks through that door. Screw everything else. We're going with this person. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that can be a little bit difficult yeah. because if you're trying to figure out, like, if you don't get a part or something, exactly. you're trying to figure out what do I need to improve on. Yes. And sometimes it's nothing. It's just you just didn't have the right look at the right time for the right casting room. Yes. Yeah. And that was it. That was it. But I do think good quality photos help your chances. Oh, of yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, they say you get a, you know, you get a chance to make two first impressions. The first time people see how you're dressed or how you look and the first words out of the mouth. And that's it, you know, that's it. That's it, you that's know. It. Yeah, I, I've done a... Uh, I did some uh, voiceover work. Um, I, I come from a medical background uh -huh. for uh, some um, doctor type stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and I send in my audition, and the guy calls me and says, Where have you been the last 10 years? <laughs> this is exactly the voice I've been looking for forever. And, and it's so strange. You listen to yourself, and it's just like, it's just me talking. Exactly. And, 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 and so sometimes I think it's really hard to appreciate how other people can appreciate what you bring yeah. way more so than you do your than, than you say yourself all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because for me it's like taking a model, putting the sitting down, working with them to create a photograph isn't hard for me to do. The challenge is to find something that is interesting and a little trick of challenging or attacking side and seeing what I can do with that. Mm -hmm. um, but the craft in and of itself isn't hard. I, I came from a film background. I started shooting film back in the the seven, it was 79 is when I got my first camera. Oh wow. Uh, the old one tens you do you just get the film to develop their boundaries. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, when I do the uh, when I do the photo now, I will always have a lot of the photographers come in. You have a few uh, folks who've been at it for a while like me. But then you have folks who literally just bought a camera like yesterday. And they have no idea how any of this works. Uh -huh. And so I'll mention film. I'll mention one scene or medium format, large format film, and the, the eyes will glaze over. And, yeah. 
what is that? I'm like, back in the old days, we used chemicals to <laughs> and we'd pull it out, and it was poisonous, and that was your photograph, you know? Boy, in, in 1976, I had a job in the photography darkroom in my uh, high school, actually mixing the, the developer. To this demo. day, I still remember what that smells like. Oh, yeah. It's kind of the same now, now, I know uh, for filmmaking, uh, occasionally, uh, for a different look, they try to film on real film rather than yes. digital. Do you ever find that with the pictures you take? Do you, Some, ever, do you ever have a, um, um, ideas where you say, you know, this would look better if on I film? Old school. Ooh, good Lord, yes. All the time. I, I still shoot large, large format film, you know, four by five squares, uh -huh. uh, which we need to do. <laughs> um, um, and you will sometimes be uh, my my idol in photography is a fellow man of Helmut Moon. He was a Belgian, of, I think it was Belgian, yeah, Belgian um, fashion uh, photographer. He did a lot of black and white work. And I will see. I will walk up. Great example, COVID. Uh, COVID was at its height. I was up doing a gig in Denver, and I was staying at the Brown Palace, uh, and it was right near 16th Street, and everything was closed, and there was no one on the street at like 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I'm like, if I had my film camera, this would be literally perfect. I can get close to it and feel with digital, but film is going to make it 100%. That's it. That's mm -hmm. your shot. Sure. Uh, but yeah, there, there's stuff where you'll... I mean, there's some film that is made in there and you're never going to be able to get that look exactly ever again. It's uh, no longer reproducible. Exactly. You're yeah. not gonna, you can get close, but, you know, it's not going to be exactly the same. Well, I, I'm certainly not knocking uh, the digital. Oh, no. No, no. I mean, uh, it's I mean, safe. Think, think you, you could take... And I don't know if you ever do an approach where you say, you know, I'm going to take a thousand pictures because it doesn't cost me any money and I can delete you know, 900 of them. If I'm shooting a burlesque show, which is about two and a half, maybe three hours, I'm shooting about 1,200 images. Yeah. Because you, the light's going to change, the, the vibe's going to change, everything's going to change every second. So <laughs> you're just trying to capture something. We're going to go to a break and we'll be right back. You know, I I took some photography classes in um, in high school and whatnot, and I still remember using like a light meter, <laughs> you know, and setting everything manually on your camera and actually having to focus <laughs> it. That would be considered vintage. Because uh, I still remember when I bought the damn thing, so it's not vintage for me. Uh -huh. But uh, I still have some of the um, old manual. My my land camera, my large format camera, is with the bellows and you got to put the hood over your head. <laughs> oh, wow. You have to use a light meter still yeah, to get the uh, light, light. Although these days, cheat, make it easier. I'd use my digital camera. What are the settings? That's what it would be. That's the exposure. Match it on the all-in camera, click. There it goes. That's fat. It's a, fa <laughs> a fancy light meter. I don't, I don't need to, I, I, I'm not in school anymore. I don't have my photography teacher screaming at me for, you're taking too long. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to overexpose that. Shut up. Yeah, boy. So different. And even the, you know, I remember the, you know, timing the pictures and the different vats, you yes. know, with the, and, and yes. using the photography oh. paper and oh. you know, <laughs> setting. Now, I don't know if you had a chance to talk to him yet. Brian Shine, who's another photographer here, he has another work here. He teaches photography, and he still shoots film, like I, a lot of film. Mm. And he will post stuff on his page, but all right, we got a class in, we're all going to be developing black and white. I'm like, 
oh, I want to do that so bad. <laughs> I don't really want to do that because I don't want to get the chemical off of me again. I'm kind of done with that. So uh, <laughs> we've, we've been spoiled. I mean, even, yes. even the iPhones progressively better. They're cameras. ridiculously good now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're ridiculously good now. It's, you know, there are people that shoot entire movies on it. Oh, you know, I, you, know <laughs> you can't go better quality, but you, you got, you know, iPhone 14 is pretty well it's good. Really Microphone and it's really amazing. It, it really, really is. Yeah. So, so in, in a way, I always actually think that's pretty cool because it's going to make the, world, the playing field very level as far as the technology goes. Oh, and so, oh, absolutely. It really is going to boil down to your skill set. Yes. Because if you, you can have the greatest camera in the world. If you don't understand how light works and how color works, mm -hmm. your photos are not going to be very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, about the only thing I remember about about uh, the lighting uh, outside is that there are times of the day when the light is soft. Yep. And that's Golden when you want to take the pictures. The Golden hour, blue out. Certain yeah. hour early and certain hour certain uh, hours early. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> it's like, God help you if you don't. If you don't. Get the picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I, it's funny. I had a shoot two weeks ago. The model was an hour and a half late. And we lost her. Uh, and we can't get a thing, and that's it. It was like, oh, that's it. We can't really do anything. We shot for like 20 minutes, and I'm like, that's it. No. We can't. So can we fix it and post it? Like, yes, but I don't want to. Because all photographers are lazy. Uh, <laughs> we do uh, not want to work any harder than we have to. You do, <laughs> not, you do not sound like a lazy man. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is, I am not. Uh, I, mean, I, 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 I imagine. <laughs> I imagine actually you have a pretty profound work ethic. Just uh, it's, from uh, talking to you. Uh, it's it's. I have. <laughs> how much do I have to do? I have the wedding to finish. Two weddings. To, no, the wedding to finish. I got one of the last show to finish. Four more shoots to finish. I'm going to work on that tonight because what else is there to do other than to work? So, <laughs> I'm sure that there's a little play and relaxation in there too. Every once in a while. <laughs> Every once in a while. Every once in a while. You know, I've, I've studied a lot about um, high performance, and I guess one of the uh, high performing people in a field, and you sound like a high performer, and one of the um, Things that people don't do well enough is actually rest and recover and relax. Yes. Be yes. Because if you're going to maintain high levels of sustained performance at a high level, you know, you know it's like weightlifting. You got to give your body a chance mm -hmm. to kind of. I'm only recently limited. learning how to do that. Well, and good for you. Has, which, you know, my, my partners have tried to get on my case and say, look, you really need to. It's okay to take a day off. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's it's really, okay. it really is. <laughs> it's, it's it really okay. is. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to just like sit there and do nothing. But you know, my yeah. I, my family and where I kind of came up, it was like just keep going. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I guess that. I, I guess that. And now, has there been one, let's say, movie that you have particularly liked? For whatever the message, the filming techniques, uh, the acting, the writing, just uh, that you might call your favorite. Okay, I'm a film nut, like a son of a gun. So okay, it's well, about to well, get weird. Got, up here. We've got time. <laughs> We've got time. <laughs> there are two that I will still look at to this day, and just my mind gets blown how it's done. One is um, Coppola's Godfather. Oh, oh, classic! Oh my oh, god! The color palette, the color palette in that film is literally in a class of its own. Everyone tries to copy the genre, obviously, but it's also the look. Yeah, Coppola has a. There's a scene in the film where Michael is laying out his plan about we're gonna, I'm gonna shoot the police captain. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and he's doing and the Turk. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's sitting cross-legged in the chair. And the camera is doing a slow pan in. From above. From above. Yeah, even, the, even from in. the above at the time was kind of new. It was. And yeah, it's just yeah. creeping along. And it's like, if I could make a movie, I would have that in every shot. I've copied that pose. Literally, if I do a seated pose, I copy that pose because it's so good. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is a uh, Ari Oster film, a newer filmmaker. It's a movie called Midsommar. I, uh, I have a horror movie. 
Oh. Very, 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 very. Um, what's interesting about it is, is that he shoots daylight, literally in ninety percent of the film, which is odd in a horror film. Usually it's really, dark. usually it's dark. Yeah. There are a few scenes that are in dark, but it's mostly just really bright daylight. And he's kind of a new school. Uh, uh, film director. Uh, I mean, film. a horror in terms of um, lots of gore or more like there is psychological one, oh, thrillers. This one's, this one's basically a, a cult type horror film, so it's something like Wicker Man or, or any of the. Uh, it's one of those films that when you show up into the place and like, hey, I'm going to go away to this remote place. Uh -huh. And in this case, it's Norway. I'm going to go to this remote place with a bunch of people I don't know. They're going to just give me nothing but drugs. It's mushrooms, actually. And they're giving them nothing but drugs. And I'm going to be fine. <laughs> and when things start to kind of fall apart, it's like, I literally could see that coming. Getting off the plane. <laughs> do, do, do they incorporating the mushrooms? Or do they have sort of the implication that like, am no, I, am I, am I, do, do I understand what's going on around me? Or no. Could it be I'm imagining this? Or it, 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 it is. It is. It's. It's. Uh, it's funny because it's not quite as avant garde as something like because you can see it going that direction. What's so great about the film is that it. Um, Ari Oster makes a lot of films. He makes horror films that, but they, he makes horror films. That's his, that's his genre. But he puts in a lot of stuff that has to do with dealing with, for instance, his first film, Hereditary, had to deal specifically with trauma, with uh, a death in the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in Midsommar, a lot of the, uh, the set pieces are set off by trauma, dealing with mm -hmm. grief. Sure, really sure. with, uh, so there's still a lot of an emotional impact on that. But then it also ties in with elements of how we treat our elderly in society. No. Uh, how a, if you're an isolated from everything else, how do you react to everything else that's going on around you? Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, good old fashioned. Uh, I've taken a ridiculous amount of psychosomatic drugs, <laughs> yeah. and I'm losing my mind. So, it, but, but it, it's a film I literally will watch it once a month. Really? Because there are stuff in it that every time I see it, I see something different. What's it, what's it called? Midsommar. Midsommar. Yes. Is that a, a Norwegian name? Yes, it, it has to do with the festival of Midsommar. Midsommar. It's a, mm -hmm. a big pagan ritual okay. Uh, okay. that this particular cult that they're, hey, we're going to this little thing. There's, there's a guy there who's working on his master's degree and Finnish folklore. Mm -hmm. So you know he's going to be working in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> like I did. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, and he's trying to write this his thesis on um, festivals having to do with pagan religion. So they have a friend of theirs who is a part of this uh, cult. So they go fly out to Norway to interview all of these people and to work on this paper. And that's the premise of why he's there. Midsommar. Um, Midsommar. Wow. And it has to do with the festival of Midsommar. And it's an incredibly beautiful film, moving in its own way. The ending is glorious. Because <laughs> it's one of those films where, you know, it's like in Godfather you have the death of the five dots. When you yeah. get to that ending, and Michael Corleone is in the church. The christening of his son. You yeah, just, yeah, yeah do you, do you regret the devil? <laughs> and and then then it knocks off another, one, off another, one. another one. It's yeah. like it's like that sort of ending where you're just like for 20 minutes you're just like wow wow <laughs> that was cool okay very cool but that would probably be the two that that whenever I think of photography. Uh, I think of those films. Wow, fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for oh your goodness. time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, tell us um, if someone, I don't know the range of things that you're willing to photograph, to take pictures of. For, I've only turned that. down one concept and actually two concepts in my entire life. Other than that, I would, what's the best way for someone to get a hold of you? Best way is to go to my Facebook page. I'm under Broken Glass Photo. Um, but photo is spelled F-O-T-O because I'm a fancy artist type. Uh, <laughs> but I will get you my information. Uh, as yeah, well. yeah, best we, way to contact we, we will I was just wondering, you know, if you have a preferred method of being contacted. Facebook. 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 Okay, yeah, we'll get all that up on the screen. Sweet. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking Absolute to you. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so very much.
Well, that was a fascinating interview with Tony, a photographer. And um, I remember doing the interview. He was very high energy, very excited. You could see him jumping off the chair. Yeah, yeah. With his arms crossed, which is the only thing I thought was interesting. But, but he, very... he searched us out. We didn't have to go find him. He was found out we were there to interview, and he was... Did one of the other artists refer us? I imagine. It, it might have been... Um... Jessica, who, who works at Lightspeed, yeah. but Jessica. Uh, they, once they found out, he was running down the hall to find us. Oh, that's so cool. Well, he, he's a smart businessman, too, obviously, because, um, you know, uh, I mean, I think he likes to talk about his work. He's very passionate, but also never hurts to have some exposure and help a, another fellow exposure artist out. With Little Wait, exposure, no. oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, little oh, pun on words oh, there. Oh, that light just came on, yeah. Peter, yes, no mooning the camera. Yeah, it's yeah. not that kind of show. Yeah, it's not, not that, that kind of exposure. Hercule <laughs> 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 up here. Yeah, yeah, we still have a rating for adult oh, I like it. You audiences. See, you could tell he wasn't a lazy man because you know laziness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, um, you could tell he puts... A lot oh, of yeah. mental energy into his work. Mental and physical. Yeah. He's, he's on the mood. He, yeah, although he, he, had his, like, long. he had his like female assistant there like carrying the camera bags and stuff, so. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you a, know, he, uh, he's not the youngest man. Uh, how, old, how old was he about? I don't know. I, I think he's in his 50s. Yeah, yeah, I think he's yeah, in, in our age range. Yeah, he our age range. He might be a little younger than us. Or maybe yeah. maybe a little closer because of the time frame he was in school doing. Yeah, so yeah, it, it very well could be. I just, uh, I just, uh, he, he seemed uh, so creative and, uh, right. you know, you could see the wheels turning and, uh, and, and very well read and, and studied. He knew um, so much about filmmaking and photography, like just off the top of his head. So I was very impressed he, with him. He enjoyed it, too. Oh, he does. He, was he enjoyed pat -pat. the interview. He enjoys, you know, filmmaking. He enjoys photography. He enjoys watching movies. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, he, he enjoys his life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only, you know, the only thing about that interview is that the... The, the guy interviewing him looked, looked a little dorky, but other than that, I mean, he <laughs> looked great. <laughs> you, you look pretty good, Peter. Well, yeah, I did. <laughs> good, good job, Doug. we got to make Peter feel good. Yeah. <laughs> Stroke the ego a little. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I thought it was a very good interview. And, uh, yeah. It, no notes. No notes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, you didn't pre-interview him because you found him there. Yeah, that's and, right. But, uh, he, but you know, he's one of the guys, you, you get him to start talking and he, you're going to hear some good things. Well, he's, he's very much an introvert, extrovert, yeah. and, uh, and so you get two extroverts talking, it's like... Um, fighting he, for screen time. Fighting for screen time, yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, he was really fantastic. I, um, you know, it'd be really interesting to see what kind of wedding pictures he would do, you know, or, uh, you know, if you wanted a graduation picture or something like that, what kind of spin he would put on it. And I so, wonder if he brings armed guards to the uh, weddings, because that's about what you need to. Yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, was there anything uh, about the interview, Doug, th uh, that uh, surprised you? Um, yes. When you talked about Norway... It was like, oh, that's impressive knowledge that Peter has. Like, oh, that's the region. <laughs> I'm like, wow, oh, Peter, Peter can cipher all these languages because I'm not a very, yeah. I can recognize German because I took it. And then I was like, okay, that's a romantic li language. And, you know, German is romantic. But he's sure. like, oh, that's a Norwegian word. And well, like, you know, oh. I, I do speak several languages. I speak both Canadian English and American English. <laughs> And, and British English. And I speak British. all, yeah, I speak through. How often did you speak British English? Uh, not too you often. Like, well, it was interesting in, in university. Uh, did you in, study in, those English to English dictionaries? Yeah, oh, almost, because <laughs> half my, half, you know, at, at uh, like the University of British Columbia or some of the other ones, you know, a lot of the professors were American, a lot of the professors were British or Australian, oh. and a lot of the professors were Canadian. Do, do you, and do you do? Are you uh, fluent in Australian English? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I know some. I know some words like Fosters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, you you can't be a male over thirty and not know the word Fosters. Well, you, you it, know, it's being a, in the United States. And, but my brother-in-law will tell you that that is um, what he he put it as crap beer. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. He did this while drinking a Budweiser. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, you know, but it's really challenging, you know, because the the uh, spellings are different between British and American English. The grammar rules are different. There's just a lot of different things. And even to this day, you know, 40 years after I've left Canadian University, I still find myself switching back and forth uh, between American and British English. But, you know, a lot of people know, like, British English because there's a, a lot of TV, books, co especially comedy. I mean, Monty Python. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, a lot of people follow them. And, uh, oh, that writing's, do, that writing's brilliant. It, it, uh, I mean, you know, that you should study Monty Python like the way you study Shakespeare. I it, mean, just it, brilliant writing. And, and then, uh, you know, you... You go on the, the streaming now, the networks, a lot of these shows you get on the streaming are British detective shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. or Doctor Who. Yeah. Which but, is an all time classic. But a lot of the words mean different things. You know, like right. in the United States, if you were saying, I'm going to put this patient on a gurney and take him to the operating room in Britain they would say I'm gonna put him on a trolley and take him to the theater and it sounds like you're going out to <laughs> you like know, yeah, going, going out to watch uh, Maverick Top Gun or something you know I, so I love that interview Peter thank you for doing it yeah and people check out Tony well, now it's time for a poet after this break <laughs> social media with people like yeah. if they wanted to check out your poetry uh, yeah yeah you can yeah, check me out yeah, yeah. check her out check um, her out I'm at here queer and cocky on Instagram <laughs> here queer and cocky uh, and cocky okay yeah. alright uh, yeah, it's a very colorful title yes yeah it matches your hair and your bubbly personality yeah that's me yeah and um, I can't help noticing that you have a few tattoos yeah just a couple uh, a couple or any uh, uh, special meaning or uh, source of inspiration you talk about your tattoos at all yeah yeah i mean almost every single one of them is inspired by something beautiful in my life um <laughs> this one right here is my newest like one of my newest ones and it's a couple's tattoo um a and, tattoo. yeah with my partner uh -huh. and we got it on our one year anniversary after we got married so that one's really special to me right oh, now wow. Wow. yeah <laughs> Fantastic, and I, I like the, the artwork on the, on the that right, one. Right, yeah. yes. So 
these mermaids were actually inspired by a song I wrote. It's called The Siren's Kiss. The Siren's Kiss. Is yeah. that like the Simer, sirens from Homer's... Uh, yeah. Is it really? Yeah, so mermaid-type things that are coming in and taking um, seafaring folk down to the bottom of the sea. Yeah, they would. They, their, their songs uh, would be irresistible and the sailors would be drawn to it. And, um, and in one of the Homer's classic, they had to tie the main character to the mast. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and in my tale, the character actually gets taken into the sea and seduced by a siren. Oh, wow. So yeah. you're like rewriting a classic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always known you're going to be a poet? Is it something you've uh, more recent in life or as a young kid you had an idea? I have actually been writing poetry since I could write. Um, so, and I've submitted poetry as soon as when I was 10 years old. That's when I first submitted my first publication. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It takes a lot of courage to do that. One of my daughters uh, has just finished a uh, fantasy novel that she's entered in publication contests. And yeah, yeah it, it, takes, uh, it takes guts to put something out there that maybe someone will write. Right. <laughs> right. A little bit of fear. That's one thing artists have to deal with, a little bit of fear of possible rejection. Exactly, and it's going to happen sometimes, yeah. and you just got to work through it. Sure, sure. Do you ever get writer's block? Yes. Yes, so do, often. How, we have lots of people ask us, how do you deal with writer's block? I actually use my community, so I talk with my fellow poets, um, I go to workshops that are put on by fellow poets, and really just bounce ideas off of my community and other poets that I'm working with or that I know in the community. Was there any kind of like music? You ever put on like any Pink Floyd or anything like that? <laughs> I actually, I really enjoy pagan music while I'm writing. Pagan music? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, how would you define pagan music? I mean, I have some idea, but... Oh, just, um, I'll listen from anything from, like, War Druna, where you got, like, ancient horns and drums and stuff, to, like, S.J. Tucker, who has a very whimsical voice with a guitar and little chimes in the background. So, yeah. So, not so much Pink Floyd. No. <laughs> Have you ever written um, like for uh, like film or TV shows? No, I have not. Um, that would be really amazing, um, and I feel like some of my work would go well into some um, creations that I have seen, but I haven't had that chance yet. Do you have one um, um, area or theme or genre that um, more permeates your, your work? Yeah, so um, spirituality really comes through in my work a lot, and the different things that I believe in and that are in my mythical mythos. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would say like magic and spirituality is really what comes out. All right, mm -hmm. mythical mythos. That's yeah. some nice alliteration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> How long do your poems tend to be? Do you do both short and longer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it can be anywhere from up to three minutes to a short haiku. Um, I really write everything and anything in between. Are you old school with a piece of paper and a, yeah. and a pen? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, 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 I was guessing, you know, do you keep a, jur uh, a journal or something uh, beside your bed in case you wake up and it's like, oh, oh. my inspiration comes in the middle of the night yes. um, and so I'll like just turn over and grab like my phone or a notebook and I'll like jot something down in the morning I have no idea what it means but I try <laughs> uh, well very good yeah uh, many successful writers do that yeah yeah I, I, you, well, actually even successful business people they have an idea and it comes in the middle of the night right right in the shower they have like a waterproof <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cool <laughs> Some writers I know are purely keyboard type people. Right. I'm a little, I do a little bit of writing myself. I'm probably more old school with a paper and pen. Yeah, yeah, I just like the feel of it more. Mm -hmm. The connection of the actual word on the paper. It mm -hmm. feels really like it is a big piece of my art. I connect with that piece mm -hmm. of my art. Do you ever have times where it's like, oh, this, this sucks. And then you like scratch through the page <laughs> and three pages underneath it. Like, no. 
You know, I actually don't do that. Um, I, when I scratch out something and I don't like it, I'll just like very gently scratch it out or I'll put only one line through it. So that way if I actually come back to it and I did like what I thought, uh, then I'd be able to see it, right? Well, that's <laughs> yeah. smart. That's smart. Yeah. My, mine is, uh, I think, more uh, an expression of frustration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's a good habit or that right. people should do that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, do you have like a favorite book that's inspired you or a series of books? Um, I actually was really inspired by the Seafarer's Kiss duology recently. Um, which is a sapphic retelling of um, The Little Mermaid. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I was really into that one. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Yeah. That sounds great. Uh, you probably noticed by the blank look in my face. <laughs> That's yeah, okay. Yeah, I, uh, I don't think Grisham or uh, some of these other people that I've read. Uh, um, anyways. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I try to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many books in the world, though. There's so many books. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And then I'm of the thing of read what you think is fun. Read what is fun for you. So even though everybody tells me to read the classics, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I've read a couple of them. I'm fine. <laughs> and, uh, I, I find I have to do uh, for my my particular work so much uh, technical reading um, that I, I, I I'm sort of read out and so I, I more like I like to put on Led Zeppelin and you know right, and, and right. just you know my wife will want to do haiku and all these things and it's like I'm like no I'm putting on music <laughs> or I go to the gym and punch a heavy bag um, yeah. do, you have a, do you have a favorite movie that um, you like oh yeah, or like you, you consider like over the top of the best oh Okay, I'm a hopeless romantic. A hopeless uh, romantic. <laughs> and I really love the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I've yeah. seen the original. I mean, Jane Austen is a great author. Oh, my gosh. Amazing author. So funny. Uh, well, she breaks all the rules, too. You notice mm -hmm. in her writing, she, I, I mean, some of the rules that I've noticed, like, she changes from first person to second person to third right, person right. back and forth you know it's like if she, she'd fail the English 101 in college yeah, yeah but yeah. it turns out alright for her so it turns out, yeah I mean she's considered a great uh, for sure and um, so books we talk about music we talk about a movie mm -hmm. um, any other fun hobbies that people would be surprised that that you uh, that you like or that you enjoy um, I actually I played rugby for 12 years oh, and that right. was a huge part of my life it still is like um, I met my partner through rugby and things like that so um, what I, position did you play? I, I played in the scrum oh you're in the scrum um, yeah. I, I played some rugby I grew yeah. up in Canada so I played rugby as well yeah I, yeah holding up the hooker in the middle <laughs> an official name of a position in right. the, the hooker because they have to hook the ball back and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I was a, a brick, a brick lane. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Did yeah, you that, go fast? Um, not the fastest, okay. but I really like when, you, when you're on the short side of the field and someone was trying to race down the side and you mm -hmm. broke off really fast to make the tackle. Okay. That was like my, my favorite part of that Love position. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was a, that's a great sport, yeah, for sure. And what do you see yourself, uh, like, um, do you have like a goal for the upcoming year? in terms of like, oh, I'd like to get a certain number published or I just want to write a certain volume or how do you, how do you sort of plan out the year for your artist, artist work? Yeah, so this year I am going to hopefully submit two um, times to a publication. I've already submitted once this year, Good. so now I'm going to try again on another publication. I'm not sure which one yet. Um, and then I also have a goal of being featured in the um, Keep Colorado Springs Queer Queer Poetry Night. I want to be the well, feature. So, so how, that, how, how, do you, how do you uh, how do you become the feature? Is like the is it when when they say features that like just one person that's mm -hmm. like the keynote speaker? Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And you are invited by the people putting on the event. So um, 
I'm hoping to put it out into the universe that they'll notice some of my work. Well, now, well, now um, sort of a business question. Mm -hmm. Do you write, um, like if someone said, hey, I'd like a poem on X, Y, or Z, do you take commission work? I would take commission work. Um, it would have to fit within my genres. I can't, of course. I don't really write outside my genres. <laughs> Say, let's say someone was interested in your, your genre. Mm -hmm. how, would, how would they contact you? To, um, would, they, would they DM you on your Instagram? Yeah, that's the easiest way to do that. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Do you have a website? I do not have a website yet. It is hard being a starving artist over here. <laughs> do you have to supplement uh, your um, artist income? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so many people do. It takes a while. Right, right. I got that regular nine to five. This is more my night time. You're not alone. Right, as a matter of fact, I'd say it's the norm. It's rare to yeah. find someone, at least as, as young as you, that can support themselves in their art. I mean, it might come one day, but you know, I, yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's great. Thank you for taking the time to talk. Of course, You've been of course. wonderful, and, um, and if you're ever up for a um, a full uh, a full taping of a couple episodes, uh, we'd be happy to have you. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. That was really fun. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I loved your energy and your bubbliness yeah. and just everything about it. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, did, Pete, did you just get all the enthusiastic people like you? Well, and so you talk to yourself in a way. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Shane oh, was yeah. really amazing. She was yeah. so high energy, so bubbly. Okay. Yeah, all the difficult interviews I'm saving for you. <laughs> you <laughs> someone like me. Yes, no. Yeah. The uh, no, right? The, the one on Johnny Carson, the Charles Gordon came on. The, um, it, did it, he do that? Yes, no. Answers? Yes, yes, no. And it, it got to be funny, and Johnny's kind of like. Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's always a, um, a concern when we have a guest. You know, you, you wonder, are they going to be really short and brief with a question and uh, a response to a question? Or will they elaborate? Or do we gently need to nudge them, you know, say a little bit more? But that's or do they go down a rabbit trails where you can't even find out where they went? It has nothing to do with the question. You well, know. you know that happens too, but you know, I uh, some, she, some rabbit trails are interesting. <laughs> they are interesting. I, what I really liked about Shane, um, really bubbly, really high energy, oh, yes. really excited and passionate about being a, a poet, and mm -hmm. and and um, and also too. I don't know if you caught that in the interview. She had some really concrete, measurable goals. You know, she wanted to enter some contests. She wanted to win the feature. Uh, you know, so, uh, I, I think there's the sort of the stereotypic sort of view, like an artist just sort of floats through the year, and well, we'll see what I happens. Think different artists do different things, and then some of them are more <clears throat> ambitious, and they, they they figure out how to get things done. So. Yeah, well, you know, she was showing an example of a smart goal, you know, specific, measurable, and all that, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, some 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 goals are uh, are hard to define, you know. And mm -hmm. It's like, did I succeed or not? Because it's kind of vague. Sure. There, I want to get better in my poetry. Well, did you get better or not? You know, what's better? What poetry? Uh, you know. Can't ask me, you know. There's writing too, you know. Maybe your grammar's better, but is your stories better? I mean, sure, sure. Uh, you know, I, I laughed when she talked about um, rewriting, like, I think it's Homer's Odyssey that uh, had the um, the main character have himself tied to the mask, mast of the ship so that he, when the sirens called, he... And the way Homer writes it, if I remember right, is he's like begging his crew, you know, let me go, I'll be okay, let me go, and they're all like they have wax. Some of them have wax in their yeah. ears, and if, yeah. if, uh, what is that Odysseus? That the, yeah, uh, Odysseus. Yes. Odysseus. Yeah. If Odysseus was a real superhero, he would have got out of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Met the mermaid. Of course, his yeah. wife was waiting. What thirty? years or how long was it? I, I don't know it was a long, a long time, time. A long the time. dog was still alive so maybe it wasn't that long 
Well, he, he was going to get a lecture when he got home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talking about being late for dinner. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well you know, uh, she, she kept rejecting suitors because they kept telling her that he was dead or something like mm. that, right? And yeah. She says, no, he's alive. Yeah, the, he'll uh, make it. <laughs> well, I think uh, even in the in the history of uh, the United States, the rule was like if your husband doesn't show up after like se I think they, it was seven years most well, of the states. I thought used. it was three. But I don't know. Oh, well, maybe in Texas. I maybe in Texas. I don't know. Yeah, but I thought yeah. of this one movie of James Garner like in the sixties. He he's found on an island. He comes back, and his wife had married somebody else and so yeah it was kind of like well that was part of the whole plot of ship of tom no, um tom hanks and shipwrecked or whatever that was where he's on the island with his with his uh um, volleyball, volleyball. <laughs> what was the what was it yeah. that's yeah, great yeah he wasn't very original i mean he named it after the company the, the company that made it yeah hey. oh when you're hungry and you've had not any real water. Your brain doesn't work as well. Yeah, I, you know. That that movie I used to own and had to rebuy because there's someone who's on set tonight that still has that movie somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping that Doug's going to return it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we yeah. wonder. Yeah, boy. But, you know, I love the Bugvilly personality, and I think uh, people should look for her, and she gave her... Contact um, information. Contact information, and it was a very entertaining interview. Thank you know, you. I wonder, you know, uh, if uh, she would, like, write, like, a, a love poem that, that you could claim credit for to send to your wife. I write my own poetry, thank you. That's <laughs> 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 what the, the, he's our poet laureate for mm -hmm. the third chair and two men and that. Mm -hmm. Let's go to break, pathetic. and we will come back and wrap up. <laughs> Peter from Pikes Peak Recovery Coaching, and as you know, I do help uh, people with drug and alcohol uh, recovery uh, issues. I love to help people get better, but I also offer a variety of other services, including regular life coaching services. I've helped uh, several people write and finish a book. I've helped a doctor that was in medical school graduate and then get into a residency. And I also uh, actually have quite a, ba a background in mathematics, and I do some math tutoring for the GED, as well as the ASVAB for those that are thinking about a career in the military. So uh, my contact information is on the screen. Please send me an email or a text, and uh, we can talk about uh, some of these services and how I can help. That's uh, Peter Grigg at Pikes Peak Recovery Coaching. Well, Doug, we just saw Tony and Shane, the Two photographer. very interesting guests. Yeah, the, the photographer the and the poet. Poet, and she knew it. Yeah, I, I was a poet, and I don't know it. <laughs> and anyways, uh, they've um, uh, left the contact information that we've managed to get on the screen during the show. And so uh, if you're interested in any of their services, please contact, contact them. So, uh, good night from the third chair. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit the bell notification icon so that you know when we've uploaded another episode. Okay.